<laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Eight straight losses. Prior to the game, head coach Darko Ryakovic said that Emmanuel Quickly's timeline to return is undetermined, and that's for personal reasons. So while he is out, some other guys will step up and play the role of point guard. And tonight against the Sacramento Kings, not having a point guard really showed. The Raptors committed 21 turnovers and went through massive stretches of offensive confusion as the Kings just dominated throughout the game. It's just desire to, to do better. Um, everybody is eager to uh, perform better, to uh, compete better. Uh, a lot of players are playing outside of their roles and something they're not uh, accustomed to. Um, and uh, nobody's expecting from uh, from this group to be something that they're not, but they really got to be star in their roles. They got to do small things for each other, and that's going to that's going to really help them to uh, perform better and to be competitive in all of those games. Ultimately, there is no one on this roster without Scotty, RJ, Jakob, and IQ who can create advantages. And outside of Kelly Olynyk, Gary Trent Jr., and Bruce Brown, the roster mainly comprises of guys who are barely rotation players in the NBA or players who have spent a bulk of their season in the G League. But the name of the game is growth and growing can sometimes be painful. Put in different positions throughout the year, you know, um, just trying to make it work, trying to roll with the punches. Again, we got a whole bunch of young players as well that's trying to learn and grow and roll with the punches as well. Now, there wasn't much from the Raptors side to talk about in this game, but I wanted to bring to your attention a certain Sacramento King who I think the Raptors should be targeting in free agency this summer, Malik Monk. He could be a perfect Raptor in their system, and that's what I want to discuss in the film room. Malik Monk is one of the most electric scoring guards in the NBA that's a non-star. He is incredible at creating his own shot off of the bench. He is great at playing off of the ball and moving without the ball. And he can shoot the lights out both off of the catch and off of the dribble. Not to mention, once again, I think in general, his ability to cut off of the ball, move off of the ball, and how much he's used to playing in Sacramento's system, which I should add, has some of the similar elements that the Raptors want to run. The Sacramento Kings are inspired by the Golden State Warriors, who had Mike Brown on their roster. Jamma is the offensive coordinator for the Raptors right now, who used to be the offensive coordinator for the Warriors. So there's sort of a tree growing here in the sense that the Raptors are inspired to play a certain type of basketball that the Kings like to play and the Warriors like to play. And Malik Monk thrives in that type of system. He's also an incredible transition player as he shows with that dunk. But he's also a great passer, a good connector who's unselfish and can make plays for others and has gotten really, really good at the pick and roll, creating, getting downhill and creating advantages. And that's why, in my opinion, he would be a perfect player for the Toronto Raptors to target this summer. He is also the running away six man of the year this season. He is going to win the six man of the year. And I think his development from his time when he was on the Lakers to now in Sacramento really shows you, first of all, he had boatloads of potential coming out of college, but it was never really actualized in Charlotte. In Los Angeles, he got an opportunity. He ran with it, got himself a contract, a short-term contract, that being said, in Sacramento. In Sacramento, in their system, Mike Brown has mentioned this recently, saying, you know, I think the reason Malik has done so well is because of the infrastructure around him. And I totally agree with that. 100% the uh, DHO stuff that the Kings run, the off-ball moving and off-ball cutting, the high post actions that the Kings run are so perfect for a guy like Malik. And besides, he's grown as a pick and roll playmaker, as a guy who can make plays for others in the two years in Sacramento. And I think that that plays a part in it. But you know who also right, likes to run high post actions? You know who else likes to run dribble handoffs all the time? You know who else likes to run through their bigs? The Toronto Raptors. And I think when you pair Malik Monk with guys like Emmanuel Quickly, Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, et cetera, et cetera, that could be a really good team. And I actually think it would be beneficial for Monk too. I, I don't know if he could reach all-star potential because... You know, I was talking to a couple of people today about this, but becoming an all-star guard is really hard in the NBA, right? Even like Jalen Brunson struggled with it. Trey Young barely got in this year and he averaged 30 and 12. Like 
it's hard to become an all-star guard in the NBA, but I think Malik can be an incredible starter in the league. I think Emmanuel quickly can be an incredible starter in the league. Albeit that backcourt would be kind of wary defensively and you'd have to figure out ways to get better on the defensive end, especially with guys like RJ Barrett who have to grow as a defender and Scotty Barnes who's figuring it out defensively. But I think in their system and what the Raptors want to build, a player like Malik Monk makes an immense amount of sense. Uh, And so that's what I come away from this game feeling. It's <laughs> I know it really doesn't have to do exactly with what the Raptors did tonight. I more so saw Malik Monk, and I've been watching him all season, been watching him last year with the Kings, with the Lakers, but following his p- career pretty closely, as I do with guys. One of the things that I love is following guys who improve and you know, kind of tracking that development. It's one of my favorite things to do in the NBA is like, okay, this guy's starting to you know, kind of take that next step in his career. Let me follow it a little bit closer. And Malik over the last three or four years has really done that. And he's an electric guy who is like a microwave score who can explode. He's incredible in transition. Check. He's a great playmaker. Check. He can play off ball and on ball. Check. He can get a shot up. Check. I think he fits so many of the things that the Raptors need in a guard that, I mean, I kind of, it kind of makes sense that they want to throw if they should throw a bag at him. Now, for what it's worth, bringing in uh, Malik Monk would mean, you know, a a contract that is more than what the Sacramento Kings could offer. Malik just said recently that he wants to stay in Sacramento. Sacramento obviously said they would love to keep him as well. And you know what? I can't blame them. He's really important to what they do, essential in a lot of ways to what they do. And when you have Kevin Herter's contract and Harrison Barnes's contract and Chris Duarte's contract piling up, stockpiling a lot of negative assets right there uh it's hard to envision re-signing malik monk to a deal that makes it you know happy or whatever regardless they could ink him to a 17 million dollar per year deal you would have to pretty much pay more than that so are you willing to pay 20 is 20 enough to entice him three million dollars more is that really enough to entice him to come to toronto maybe maybe not is 25 probably like that's when you're like okay a 25 million dollar deal wow Let's talk about it. And so what that looks like financially for the Raptors is an aspect that has to be discussed. Likely means letting go of Gary Trent Jr. Likely means letting go of Bruce Brown. So in Malik Monk, out Gary Trent Jr. and Bruce Brown. And you as a fan have to weigh that for yourself and see which one would make more sense. And also, I don't think the Raptors would offer $25 million to Malik Monk. They have to pay Emmanuel quickly. They still have RJ Barrett's contract on the books. They got Scotty Barnes' extension that's going to kick in after next season um, once they ink it, obviously. And so I don't know if they would be interested in adding a $25 million guard to their roster. Does $22 million make sense? I don't know, folks. Look, I'm just kind of talking here at this point. I'm not, I don't have any hard numbers to give to you, but I like the idea of them pursuing a guard like Malik Monk to add to this roster, to add to their offensive dynamic. And I think he would pair well, really well offensively with IQ. I think he would pair well, obviously, with Scotty and RJ. Uh, and look, he's he's a stud. He's a stud. That's the best I can say. Uh, Raptors are going to continue losing, man, and unless you know some of these guys get healthy or return at some point. It's going to be pretty tough over these next 13 games. Uh, I was looking through their schedule. They play Washington p- twice. They play Brooklyn twice. And so those are the games where it's like, maybe you could pull out one or two. And I would love for you guys to kind of let me know in the comments how many games you guys think the Raptors will win for the rest of the season. I asked a couple people today at the game, and I think we we kind of settled on two or three. I think they win two. I think they win one of those Washington games and one of those Brooklyn games, unless they get healthy, like unless Jakob Pertl comes back and Scotty somehow comes. I, I very much so doubt that happens, but unless that happens, who knows? We'll see. Um, Memphis is also in an interesting situation. They lost tonight against Golden State, so they're now still ahead in the race for sixth. Um, but they also played Detroit twice, and they play San Antonio twice. And they have Desmond Baden back. They have Jaron Jackson Jr. They're definitely more talented as of right now than the Toronto Raptors. Um, and so maybe there's a version of this world where they flip. Who knows? We'll see. That's that's on the Raptors side, but Malik Monk, 
Think about it, folks. Thank you very much for tapping into the recap. Appreciate y'all. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys later for OKC on Friday. Actually, I'm not going to be doing the recap on Friday or Saturday. That's it, folks. Thank you very much for tapping in. Subscribe to the Raptors Republic YouTube channel. Subscribe to everything Raptors Republic does. And uh, we will see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.